See, that, that fish just came up in here. There was my jig. These fish are smacking it. I didn't even, didn't even get the jig down to the brush pile. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another sonar video. Today, I wanted to address a specific question that came up on the 2D sonar, the how to use 2D sonar video. And that was, how do you mark a brush pile? How do you mark the waypoint? And then specifically, how do you get back to it? So in this video, I'm gonna walk through a few things on 2D sonar and what I use, and then marking the waypoint, and then getting back to that actual, actual waypoint. Highly recommend if you only have 2D sonar on your GPS sonar unit, you have one of these buoy marker. I will link this below. I'll link a couple different models below. You definitely need one of these. Um, even if you have GPS waypoints, highly recommend. Fishing brush piles, these are key. So let's go find some brush piles. I'll show you what I'm looking at on 2D sonar, and then we'll mark the waypoint and show you how to get back to it. All right, here we go. Well, there's a <laughs> there's brush pile number one, but let's see if we can find one stacked up with some fish. Is there fish on top of that one? There might be some fish on top of that. Oh yeah, there's there's a few fish on top of that one. Yeah, I'm gonna screenshot this for you. There's some fish on top of that one. We'll we'll mark that and throw a buoy marker on that. So to mark this with your waypoint on the this is a Garmin 93 SV UHD. I'm just gonna put the crosshairs right on it and I'm gonna hit the mark button. Mark. And right now I'm going to have it as the red fish. So when I go back, there it is right there. It showed up on the red fish. Now to get back to it, I zoom as far as possible. I zoom in as far as possible. And I try to circle back so that my transducer, the, basically the middle of my boat, is going to run in to that waypoint again. So we're going to circle back. And uh, once I get over top of it again with the 2D sonar, I'm going to throw it in reverse and throw that buoy out. So I just drove right over the top of it. Throw it in reverse here real quick because I went a little too far. Forgot that I was filming. All right, there we go. Those are the fish we want to see. And now we're going to throw the buoy out because we're right on top of the school right there. Go ahead and toss this buoy out right behind my, right where my transducer is. My transducer is on this side of the boat. So there goes the buoy. And there are a ton of fish down there. So now I'm going to drop the trolling motor back down and troll over to that buoy. So a few things that might help you once you actually hit the waypoint, you find the brush pile or weed line that you want to help navigate back. You got to remember that 2D sonar, multiple frequencies here, or we're going to go to beam width. That's where we're going to go to. Go to beam width. Now, on older models, it's going to have a dual beam system, 83 kilohertz or 200 kilohertz. Now, if you remember from the first video that I did, 83 kilohertz is a one-to-one -one ratio, which means it's a wider uh, diameter of a cone, which means if I'm in 15, 17 feet of water, I'm going over another brush pile right now, so it's jumping, but let's say I'm in 20 feet of water. That cone is covering 20 feet of the lake bottom, but if I'm using 200 kilohertz, the cone's only covering a third of that. So to help you kind of find your brush pile um, with 2D sonar, I would recommend the largest angle that you can get, which is also the smallest frequency, which in most cases is 83 kilohertz. Now this, this uh, unit has a frequency from 230 kilohertz to, down to 145 kilohertz. Also has this chirp function. Um, what this does is uses multiple frequencies within the same range to give you a, hopefully a crisp, clear picture. Now remember, if you're drifting over the top of a brush pile or something like this, these longer lines, your transducer's up in the right-hand corner. It's going to send that signal down and bounce back. So anything that shows up right here on the far right edge, that's directly under your transducer. Anything moving from right to left is historical data, typically when you're trolling around. But you can see I'm not really moving. So I'm probably sitting right over the top of the same exact log or piece of brush. There's a, I'm thinking that might be a fish. So this fish slowly swam up and slowly swam back down to the brush pile right there. Okay. As the sonar, as the transducer was sending the signal down, that fish just slowly moved back up and back down. That's kind of what they look like. Now I'm coming over the edge of the brush pile. I think I'm floating over my buoy right now. But the main reason you 
use the biggest angle you can get or use the lowest frequency is because you're going to cover a lot more water. You're going to be able to get on top of that waypoint. If you can't drive right over the top of it, hopefully that wider cone angle is going to help you find that brush pile or that weed edge or that school of fish, whatever you threw the waypoint on. All right, so it does help if you have your sonar on your, trend, on your uh, trolling motor as well. Here is the edge of it, of the brush pile. Now the buoy, I'm actually right over the top of the buoy now. Uh, it's, it's probably under the boat. I was off by about two feet from that buoy toss, but that's why it's really helpful to have a transducer on your trolling motor. I'm gonna drop down this little creature bait. This is a crappie monster uppercut. Eighth ounce ACC crappie stick jig. And when you're, when you're trying to do kind of vertical fishing with 2D sonar, shorter rod definitely helps because you're trying to get that jig right below the transducer on the trolling motor. And I'm, oh, oh my goodness, I saw him fly up on the 2D. You know what, I'm gonna get a camera on that for you guys. That fish just shot out of there. I'm gonna screenshot that for you. You can see the line, me dropping the jig down and that fish just shot out of there. That was crazy. All right, now you can guys see that 2D sonar. I'm right over the top of this brush pile. I'm gonna drop that jig straight down below it. If you wanna see your jig, turn that gain up a little bit. Oh my goodness. These fish are smacking it. I didn't even, didn't even get the jig down to the brush pile. I don't know if you guys saw that. But this is what it looks like on 2D when you're sitting right over the top of something. These are fish right here. I'll screenshot that for you. These are fish above, these thicker lines down here are the, the pieces of the wood on the, well, this is technically a crib, but these individual lines, those are crappie or some sort of fish. So we can drop down below transducer and actually pick up the jig oh my goodness see now I'm kind of getting out to the edge of the brush pile here and these more these look more like uh, this oh, there's a lot of separation here now we're drifting back over the top of the brush pile you see these harder returns right here gosh dang I think I'm missing them I think I'm missing bites these are definitely fish stacked above the brush pile see how much separation that is that's how you can tell the, you know, even if you don't have down imaging, down imaging will definitely be able to see, there's one, they're just running with it. Down imaging, you definitely be able to see these fish separated, but 2D works good enough. These are uh, not big fish. Eh, it might be an okay frying pan fish, a little on the small side. Typical frying pan fish are gonna be about nine inches. Oh, there's, <laughs> There's a school of bait fish right there. Way up top. But see all these individual lines? Those are all crappie. Oh, there went my jig. See my jig goes straight down? I'm in the middle of them now. Oh man, I missed them. See that, that fish just came up in here. There was my jig. There he is. This is a little bit better fighter. Oh well. Cause I funky hooked him. Funky hooked him. Got him in the gill plate. That'd be a decent eater. Let's see what this guy is. Quick. That'd be a decent uh, frying pan fish, but I'm not gonna keep any today. There are so many fish down there. There, holy smokes. Okay, now we're coming over the edge of that brush pile. See how that that hard return over here? That was all the wood. Now these fish, they're schooled up on the just on the outside corner of it, kind of drifting over that. Oh my goodness. Literally every drop, I'm just getting smacked. I want to get this jig underneath the transducer so you guys can see it better. But that is that is a monster school of fish. There I am, dropping down. I'm stop it. That fish, see that fish just shot up right there? That fish just shot up the water column off that brush pile little guy but you can do a lot with 2d sonar so if you only have a 2d uh, some sort of 2d sonar GPS system you can do quite a bit with it it's gonna take you a lot longer to find brush piles or weed edges but you can definitely make it work especially when you get on a school like this 
There's my jig dropping down. See that line going back down? That's my jig, and there's like three or four fish there. There he is. But let him go. That would be a solid eater. Now, some of you might have noticed, I'm getting a bunch of spikes like this. And the reason for that is I turn the gain up so that I can see this eighth ounce jig below the transducer. Um, I could probably narrow the cone. There's a couple things you can do. Let's try this. Let's narrow the beam a little bit. And that's going to shrink what I'm seeing. But now that cone is a lot narrower, which means I have to get this jig directly below the transducer. It's not going to read it. So there's my jig falling down. It's super hard to see. There it is. Notice how it dropped down right there. I'm going to screenshot that for you. It's very soft mark as it was falling down. But once it got to about 10 feet, because it got inside that cone, it picked up a harder signal. All right, there's a big school. There's my jig dropping down. Bam, I'm right on top of them. Oh, there he was, son of a gun. That's a good, uh, good little screenshot of what I was doing there. That jig was at the top of that screen. You could see fish come up and hit it. Oh, here comes some more fish. All right, so to find that brush pile again, I'm actually gonna boost out my, my beam angle, get a little wider beam, just so I can catch the edge of it at least if, on this 2D. All right, we're gonna drop down right on top of this jig, hopefully. Oh man, smacked it. There's a huge school of them on top of this brush pile. I am right over the top of some of these logs, but these are all fish up top. There's my buoy, as you can see. It is right in the middle of that school. What's going on? Oh, there he is. I bet you one of them had it the entire time. I just didn't feel it. That'd be a decent eater. Eh, maybe not. No, he, he's on the small side. Man, there is a giant school right above that brush pile, though. So this is as simple as it gets. 2D sonar, get right vertical over the top of them, drop down with your jig, catch some crappie. Now this break, that means I drifted right off that brush pile. You see that? Now I'm drifting right back on top of it. Oh, see there's a fish came up and smacked. There's my jig right there. About that eight foot mark, he came up and tapped it. I'm right, right about that 10 foot mark. There's a ton of fish just staring at it. Did they take the plastic off? No. Remember, you're not going to see that jig within that first probably two, three feet of that sonar because your cone is way too small. I mean, especially if you have it on 200 kilohertz. If you're only three feet down, that cone is only a one foot wide in diameter. So it's going to be really tough to pick up that jig. But the further you go down in the water column, the easier it's going to be to pick it up. There's one. It's as simple as that. But you gotta make sure you have your boomer marker. That's a good eater. That'd be a nine incher right there. Oh yeah. There's nine, nine and a quarter. He'd be a decent eater. One of these days I will do a fish fry for you guys. Or I'll show you, show you my new Louisiana Cajun cooker. I'm in love with that thing. Oh my goodness, right as I turn the cameras back on. That's a better fire. Well, that's, that's another solid eater. Maybe I should start keeping these and fry them up tonight. Ooh. He just rehooked himself. He unhooked himself and rehooked himself. <sighs> Let him go. Well, that's pretty much as simple as it gets. So appreciate you watching. If you got any comments or questions about any of the setup, you can post them in the comment section below, or you can message me on either Facebook or Instagram. Appreciate hearing from you. I'll link the entire setup and my my gear in the description. So yeah, I'm gonna get off the water here because it's starting to get a little too much boat traffic. 
I might catch a limit first so I can fry them up, but we'll see ya.